Andrew Mitchell, we continue to call these attacks unprecedented, but this moment we find ourselves in, the complexity within the region right now, likewise unprecedented. Absolutely. That's so such a good question, because this is a moment where, in fact, the U.S. and Israel and Saudi Arabia are talking about what could be, if it were to happen, an historic deal, an historic deal where the Saudis would uh, recognize Israel diplomatically. That would lead to other Arab countries joining suit. And the U.S. is eager to do this if, if, as President Biden, I'm told, also told Prime Minister Netanyahu in New York just last month at the U.N. when they met face to face for the first time, I should point out, since President Biden was elected, if President uh, if Prime Minister Netanyahu would guarantee that part of the deal would not leave the Palestinians out, that the so-called two-state solution, a Palestinian state, that they would still have enough land, contiguous land, to have a state, something that is very much in jeopardy because of Netanyahu's coalition's expansion policies of the settlements into the West Bank, breaking up what had been uh, Palestinian land. So it is, it's, there's a long way to go on this. Just tonight we were told by a senior official that that is something that still has a lot of work to do. Also, opposition in the Senate to Saudi Arabia getting a civilian nuclear program from the United States. Uh, this would all have to be approved by the Senate. There's a lot of questions about safeguards on that. Uh, that said, there is speculation, and they were asked about it tonight. They said that they don't think that this is an attempt by Iran to derail it, but there is a lot of speculation that this, the timing of this is aimed at derailing something that uh, President Raisi of Iran exclusively told Lester Holt just a month ago in Tehran that Iran is very much against. And as well, you know, we're seeing calls from the White House today, from the President, from the Secretary of State, from Lloyd Austin, to all of the major players in the Middle East. And uh, a call just a few hours ago to Saudi Arabia by Secretary Blinken. So everyone is engaged. The White House is trying the best they can, but right now Hamas which has historically been armed by Iran, basically invaded Israel by crossing the border for the first time. They'd gone through tunnels before, had been pushed back, but this time it was air, sea, and land. Nothing like this has ever happened before. And Israel is constrained in its response because they have so many hostages now, men, women, children, women who are in the military as well as civilian women. And uh, at that point, Israel has always historically not done anything that would endanger their citizens. They, they sent thousands of, of Palestinian prisoners back years ago just to get one Israeli soldier who had left, been left behind in Gaza, who had been captured in Gaza. So they have a, a an historic commitment to saving Israeli lives or bringing back Israelis, whether they're alive or dead, from these conflicts. And that is obviously going to constrain how they, how they calculate um, the retaliation, which we all anticipate. Andrew, I wonder what your reporting is telling you about the intelligence failure that led to what we have watched transpire in the last 24 hours and efforts to, to, to get intelligence back on track, both in Israel and in the United States. Alicia, that is just kind of mind-blowing because Israel has uh, a vaunted Israel, uh, Israeli intelligence program, the Mossad. They have been known for years for, to be able to pick... Uh, one is Iranian scientist out of, of a pack, you know, hit someone in a bicycle, uh, take out terrorists or, you know, people that they accuse of being terrorists. So the fact that they did not see this coming, uh, there will be an argument in Israel that the domestic controversies, which have completely engaged and engulfed the country over changing the Supreme Court, uh, with the country divided, with the military and intelligence officials also opposing some of the hard right coalition's plans, that that maybe was a distraction, but they've really not been paying attention clearly to Gaza because they managed to do an extraordinary thing, a coordinated attack in, in multiple ways and getting through some of the best defenses along that border.